AI is experiencing jolting change with advancements such as ChatGPT and GPT-4, but there are limits to individual and organizational adaptability. I was invited to sign an open letter uh, that asks uh, to allow for a deeper consideration of AI design and implementation, as well as regulation. The concerns include inherent bias, job displacement, pollution of the infosphere, loss of trust in communication, and potential dangers of artificial general intelligence. The benefits of AI and AGI are immense, but responsible development and planning are crucial for harnessing these benefits and mitigating uh, the associated risks. My name is David Orban, and this is The Context. The field of artificial intelligence born uh, in the 40s uh, when the first architectures of computers have been designed by von Neumann and others experienced waves of hype and disillusionment uh, across the decades. The promise of being able to create alternative systems that exhibit what we call intelligence in humans, problem solving, analyzing, uh, and executing on opportunities, goal seeking, agency. Uh, this plan, this objective uh, has been uh, pursued in various ways. Uh, originally uh, via top-down architectures and more recently via bottom-up approaches in neural networks. The latest generations of these tools are exhibiting features that would have been at the time 20, 30, 40 years ago ascribed to clear intelligence. Today, we are more skeptical and cynical about them. Uh, we have been constantly moving the goalpost, what it means for a computer to be intelligent. However, it is harder and harder uh, to uh, restructure our thinking as well as to adapt the way we work, the way we live, to take into account what these systems are capable of. The latest, like ChatGPT, that you can and should try if you haven't yet, are difficult to ignore in how they are able to address the questions that are posed to them with apparent competence, expressing complex thoughts, with an ability to reflect on what they state, to correct if you highlight in the conversation that you have with them the mistakes that uh, they have uh, potentially made and reformulate their answers accordingly. There are a very large number of articles and videos that go into detail around the surprising ways that ChatGPT uh, behaves uh, and what are called the latent features that arise and can be observed uh, in its capabilities. Some source of the concern comes from these latent features. The whole uh, science and mathematics uh, around uh, 
large language models uh, to which uh, GPT uh, belongs, uh, whether created by uh, OpenAI or by others, uh, is in its infancy. We do not have a complete set of tools to dig deep and understand exactly how out of the tens and hundreds of billions of parameters and their combinations that these software systems are composed of, the particular features arise. We cannot pinpoint easily to then intervene and correct certain types of behaviors in the systems. The whole aspect of fine tuning them so that they um, tend to behave the way we want them to behave is more like an experimental uh, approach than not something grounded uh, in provable and completely understandable uh, ways. We use uh, reinforcement learning where a human uh, operator confirms if a particular output based on the input is uh, positive or negative and uh, a series of uh, operations such as this will nudge the system towards desirable behaviors. But this kind of uh, reinforcement learning is not a guarantee. Uh, neither of locking in the system to behaving only in that way, nor of impeding that areas that haven't been mapped and haven't been uh, reinforced will not exhibit unwanted uh, activities, unwanted behaviors by the system. There have been already uh, a lot of uh, ways uh, with which uh, the imperfections of the current approach have been highlighted, whether they are regarding the bias in the training data, whether it is bias in the behavior of the systems, whether it is the danger of uh, abusing the power that uh, these advanced but still limited uh, AI systems can uh, support uh, by um, actors uh, that uh, want to provoke chaos, um, procure damage, or in any way harm. It, even just uh, uh, the ability of uh, relatively small groups of people who want to have a laugh at the expense of millions or billions of others who uh, may not uh, comprehend the value of a given joke. And that is a little bit the point of uh, the open letter. Uh, this open letter that has been drafted by the Future of Life Institute at MIT uh, that uh, um, is involved in uh, uh, analyzing and addressing existential risks. These are not only around artificial intelligence, but uh, many other technologies. Um, nuclear weapons, autonomous um, lethal weapons, um, biological um, pathogens, uh, asteroid threats, and so on. Now, specifically in the field of AI, uh, these concerns are already um, important and justify a desire to give a little bit of breathing space both to specialists 
as well as to policymakers to better understand what is the right way to proceed. But that is uh, compounded by a larger risk that may be more remote but cannot be ignored of artificial general intelligence that may not behave in the interests of humanity. AGI uh, is something that uh, we don't yet have. Uh, we as humans have GI, general intelligence, to some degree. We can apply our intelligence in any direction that we want. An AGI would similarly be able to apply its own intelligence in any direction it wants. And of course, what we would want from it is for this application to be only in those directions that are compatible with human flourishing, with a human future. As of today, we don't know how to uh, impose this or how to assure this or how to uh, design and deploy and manage a system that would be as powerful as the theoretical uh, expectations indicate. And that means that an AGI could deviate a little bit initially, but then to an arbitrarily large degree from what we believe is desirable. So the open letter that uh, is entitled Pause Giant AI Experiments uh, is just a starting point. It is a starting point for broader conversations. The letter very practically and maybe somewhat naively says, just for six months, let's agree on a moratorium on training and deploying systems that are more powerful than not what we already have. And it is hard because we would need to have a global planet-wide consensus on this, both from uh, state actors and private organizations uh, that do not have apparently convergent aligned interests. But it is probably also somewhat late because it is almost guaranteed that OpenAI, the organization that trained, uh, fine-tuned, and released GPT-4, the threshold above which the signatories, including me, of the open letter invite no one to go, already surpassed. OpenAI is likely to have already designed and probably already trained what we would end up calling GPT-5 and may be already in the process of fine-tuning it before it gets released, perhaps in the fall or just a year from now. It is perhaps uh, significant that while um, a lot of people signed the open letter, none of them are from uh, OpenAI. So when I say that this is just a starting point for uh, opening uh, conversations, uh, these um, conversations should include a very large 
set of stakeholders. And uh, these should include experts in the field of artificial intelligence. They should include experts in safety and security, both in general of uh, systems design, but also specifically about artificial intelligence and artificial general intelligence, safety and security. And they should also include regulators and policymakers globally in order to understand what can be done. Now, already, even if, as of this recording, uh, just a couple of days uh, passed from uh, the um, release uh, of the open letter, uh, it has received a lot of attention and also uh, quite a bit of criticism. I think the criticism is part of the conversation and highlighting the, the fallacies or uh, the naivete of uh, the letter as it has been uh, formulated is positive. It is what is needed in order to go in the right direction. Of course, the more uh, the criticism is actionable, the better. But uh, since the solution is not here yet, uh, it is perfectly natural that uh, not everyone is able to see where to go just because they see that uh, the current position and the current ideas are not working yet. Technological progress cannot be stopped. It may not even be uh, slowed down, but provoking action is necessary in order to manage how it evolves. We have had technological uh, disruptions in the past and there have been people and organizations that benefited and have been able to adapt uh, to these disruptions. Today, it could be that we really have to understand how to increase the limits of our adaptability. Otherwise, just a too large a percentage, a too large a proportion of both individuals and organizations will prove not to be able to adapt to the changes and the disruptions that the current wave of jolting technological disruption of advanced artificial intelligence um, will create in our global civilization. Thank you.